I'm about to do your Sagittarius May 2021 love reading, and in this reading we're going to take a look at how your romantic person of interest really feels about you. Sagittarius, how is it going? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Sagittarius love reading. Now if this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you always get notified anytime I post a new Sagittarius tarot reading for you. Now let's get on with this Sagittarius May 2021 love reading for today because today we're going to take a look at how your romantic person of interest really feels about you here in May 2021 what they're thinking about you, what their beliefs are about you. Then we're going to look at what their intentions are toward you and then what their most likely actions are going to be toward you here in May 2021. And then I'm going to finish the reading off by getting you some advice from the universe on how you should best navigate the situation you're finding yourself in with this person that you're romantically connected to. What you should do, what you shouldn't do, kind of how you should play it so it works out in a way that's best for you. Now keep in mind, as always, that this is not a personal reading, this is a general reading, which means I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person, I'm tapping into the collective energy of the group of Sagittarius people that I'm supposed to be getting messages for. Which really means there's no possible way this reading is going to resonate with every Sagittarius on the whole planet all at the same time, because I'm not reading for every Sagittarius on the planet, I'm reading for my specific group of Sagittarius people that I'm responsible for getting messages for. Now it's also important to keep in mind during general readings like this that energies can get flipped around backwards from time to time, especially for cross watchers. So if you're not a Sagittarius and you're just watching this reading because you've got the hots for a Saggy, I'm totally cool with that. Just keep in mind that especially for cross watchers, energies can get flipped around backwards. That's pretty frequent. So you just got to take it as it resonates. Now, regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you still might want to check your moon sign, your rising sign, and your Venus sign videos just because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the links to those videos in the description down below. Clearly, these cards are ready to talk to you, so let's stop yakking and let's get on with this Sagittarius May 2021 love reading. Let's start by getting three cards for how does Sagittarius' romantic person of interest really feel about them here in May 2021? How are they feeling about Sagittarius here in May 2021, please? Let's get three cards. Mm, that one's coming with us. Let's get one more, please. Thank you. Okie dokie. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Swords. This is Gemini energy. This is about thinking about something on this repeating loop in their mind, being stuck in their head about something, thinking about it over and over and over again, not sure what the safe step to take is in this situation with you, which is why they're thinking about it over and over again. And they're feeling stuck, trapped, and blocked because they're not quite sure exactly what to do. Right under that we have the Empress. Now this is the mother of the tarot deck. So this is a very loving, mothering, nurturing, creative type of an energy. This represents all four queens rolled up into one person. Now this is also card three of the Major Arcana, which represents the gateway between the universe or the divine and this physical 3D reality that we live in. So all new things get manifested into our physical 3D reality via the Empress. So she represents the birth of something new. So they're stuck in their head thinking about birthing something new here with you. Or feeling like birthing something new with you. We have Sagittarius energy here with Temperance. So it's definitely you they're thinking about birthing something new with. This is a very patient energy. This is about blending things together little bits at a time. Not being in a big hurry with it. Trying to like take things nice and slow. Take a step back, look at the big picture here before they come back in and blend some more things together. Trying to make some fine-tuning adjustments. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're single, or they're feeling like you're single. 
This Nine of Pentacles is the singles card. This is Virgo energy. This is with you, without you, in spite of you. I'm single, abundant, and prosperous all in my own right. I don't need anyone to take care of me in this physical 3D reality. I've got that in the bag. I've got this taken care of on my own. I'm self-sufficient. Can do this on my own. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they want to do this on their own. Doesn't mean that they feel that you want to do this on your own. It just means if it comes right down to it, you can handle it on your own. And they can handle it on their own, too. They don't actually need anyone to take care of them, which is a good spot to be in. Now, for their actual feelings about you here in May 2021, we have the Seven of Cups. We have the Five of Swords. And we have the Seven of Swords not looking so good here they're stuck in their head thinking about something here the birth of something new it, it, this is not looking so swift here this seven of cups is scorpio energy this is options and choices but it's confusion about those options and choices there's a lot of cups here there's a lot of different stuff in these cups there's a lot of emotions involved in this situation and your person doesn't want to make a mistake so either they're confused about the options that they have, it's got them stuck in their head about birthing something new, or they think that you have a lot of options. They feel like you've got some options here, and they're stuck in their head maybe worrying about whether you are birthing something new, because you're single here. The next card in their feelings for you is the Five of Swords. This is Aquarius energy. Fives represent conflict, so this is either a conflict in their thinking, a conflict in communications, like a bickering and arguing, bitter words being spoken, words being used like weapons, tongues being used like swords. This can even be an energy of like a winning at all costs type mentality. This almost always represents some sort of a painful situation that's going on. So your person is feeling confused about you. Feeling like there's some painful situation taking place to the point that it's got them stuck in their head about it. It's something related to a new beginning here. Now another meaning for temperance can be like assimilating changes, as in like coping with changes that have taken place. We've got the singles card right under that. It's possible that they have recently become single. Possible you guys have just had a recent breakup here with this Five of Swords energy. I mean, this is a definite painful situation. It can represent an argument, some sort of a conflict you guys have had, some sort of a dispute. The next card in their feelings is the Seven of Swords. This is more Aquarius energy. Usually not such a great sign. One of the main meanings of this card is trying to get away with something, like lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind backs, deceptive behavior overall trying to get away with something now this can also represent a couple of other things so take this however it resonates for you it might be something entirely different for you than the very next saggy that shows up to watch this reading behind you but another meaning for this can be self-preservation as in not wanting to be hurt the whole reason the dude's stealing these swords is because he doesn't want to be hurt by those swords he doesn't want these swords used against him so he's stealing them to make sure that they can't be used against him so it can mean self-preservation, it can mean not wanting to be hurt, it can mean that there's been this painful situation and they don't want to be hurt by that. Another meaning for this could be leaving something behind, because he can only carry five of those swords. He can only carry these five of those swords, and he's got to leave two of the other swords behind. So this could represent that as well. This could be they're confused about what to do, they're stuck in their head, feeling like birthing something new with you. But there's been this painful situation that they have to walk away from. It could be that there was some painful situation like a betrayal where there was some sneaking around behind backs going on. This is supposed to be their feelings about you. But like I said, in a general reading, things can get flipped around backwards. So this could entirely be that your person did something where they had a bunch of options and choices. They birthed something new, caused some sort of a painful situation. It could be there was some treachery going on, some sneaking around behind your back. It could be any of those things. So let's take a look at what does this person think about Sagittarius in May 2021, please. Let's get one more for what they're thinking about Sagittarius. Thank you. Hmm. On the bottom of the deck... 
We have the Ten of Pentacles. This is Virgo energy. This is maximum stability, maximum abundance, maximum prosperity. This is most people's goal in the physical 3D reality. And we did see that Nine of Pentacles. Now we're going up to the Ten of Pentacles. So this is taking two people who are in that Nine of Pentacles state where like with you, without you, in spite of you, I'm good on my own. I don't need someone to take care of me. I'm financially stable. I've got my whole physical 3D reality in order. Well, this is two people in that state coming together. The combining together of two people, two families, all their assets, all their resources to make something very stable, abundant, and prosperous. So this can be like building a legacy together here. That's what's on their mind. That's what they're thinking about. We have the Six of Wands under that. This is Leo Energy. I'm a Leo, by the way, as if you couldn't tell by my shirt. I do have these in the store now for all the different zodiac signs. So we've got a, a Sagittarius as a, an NAF shirt. I'll just leave it at that so Google doesn't penalize me. But this is a card of recognition. This is about your person recognizing something, doing some thinking and recognizing something either about themselves, about you, about this connection. And whatever they're recognizing is allowing them to move forward in success and victory. So we've got them leaving something behind here. Looks like what they're leaving behind is a painful situation. So that's this could be a little bit better looking than I thought it was originally here. Yeah, and look, they're moving forward in success and victory toward you. Thinking about offering this cup of love to you. The Knight of Cups. Knights are action takers. Cups are about love and emotions. So this is actions toward love and emotions, actions toward romance, romantic gestures, love offers. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So, apparently, maybe this whole Five of Swords thing, this could be they're feeling that you have had some sort of a painful situation and they're feeling like you are finally walking away from that. You are leaving that behind because they're thinking about this bringing the love offer to you. They're thinking about combining your assets and resources, building a legacy together here. We have the King of Swords in there thinking, the Eight of Wands, and we have the Moon. The King of Swords is Gemini energy. We've got too many swords out here, though. Swords generally are not a good sign in a love reading. We've got the King of Swords here. This is Gemini energy. This is a decision-making energy. This is someone who's very smart, very analytical, very logical, very rational. Usually someone who's very fair, but it's someone who is emotionally detached, emotionally disconnected. They don't consult their emotions when they make their decisions. The King of Swords is only interested in what he can see right in front of him. He's interested in the truth and the facts of the matter. He doesn't care about the emotions behind what's going on or the story behind what's going on. He's only interested in the truth and the facts. And he's gonna use the truth and the facts to come to the best, most logical, most rational decision available for everyone involved here. So it's some sort of a decision that your person's thinking about regarding building something together with you here, building this maximum stability. And during this thinking about this, during looking at the facts and the truth of the matter here, they recognize something that looks like it's causing them to think about making a love offer in your direction. Next, we have the Eight of Wands in their thinking. This is Sagittarius energy. This is the second fastest moving energy in the whole tarot deck. It's about rapid back and forth, passionate communication rapid forward movement, rapid forward progress on something that they have a lot of passion and desire for, which seems to be you here. But also in their thinking is the moon. This is fears, worries, anxiety, the, something being hidden in the dark, as in something they don't know about, something they can't see, something that they're not aware of yet, something that's hidden from them. This can represent secrets being kept. It's possible that they feel like you have done something sneaky or it's possible that they themselves have done something sneaky and that's hidden in the dark from you here. I'm getting the feeling like they think that it's you who has done something sneaky here. Something that they can't see and it's got them worried. That's probably why we saw that Eight of Swords, why they're stuck in their head grinding on this in this repeating loop in their mind here. What does this person believe about Sagittarius in May 2021, please? 
What do they believe about Sagittarius in May 2021? Really? Hmm. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Pentacles. We just saw the Ten of Pentacles. This is the seed that has the potential to grow into the Ten of Pentacles that we all want. Now, it's not the Ten of Pentacles in and of itself. It just has the potential to get there. And that's the thing about aces. You have to grab those and do something with them. Otherwise, they're just empty potential. But this has the potential for something very stable, abundant, and prosperous with it, at least in terms of what your person believes. But they're stuck in their head about something. They're thinking about something a lot, so much that it's like they can't get it out of their mind. They're not sure what the safe step to take is with you. Now, this moon card doesn't have to be a secret. This could just represent that they're having fears, worries, and anxieties, which could be why we're seeing them stuck in their head like this. Thinking about this opportunity a lot. Yeah, an opportunity to birth something new with you. Again, with the Empress here. Now, in their beliefs about you for May 2021, Sagittarius, we have the Star, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. Now, the Star is Aquarius energy again. So, I've got three Aquarius cards out here on the table in front of me. Hmm. Yeah, that's the most common sign I'm seeing. You could be dealing with an Aquarius. You could be dealing with literally any sign. I'm just going to keep calling out the ones that prominently jump out to me just in case that matters to you. But the star is a card of healing. It's a card of hope. It's sometimes a card of wish fulfillment. This is card 17 of the Major Arcana. So this is the card that comes immediately after the tower in the Major Arcana. So you don't ever make it to the star energy without going through a tower moment first. When the tower happens and everything comes apart and comes crashing down, oftentimes people don't really know what to do from there. They can't see their path moving forward because everything so abruptly changes and they didn't see that coming. The star is the guiding light from the universe that shows up to light your path for you so you can see your way moving forward. It's where your healing comes from. It's where your hope to be able to move forward comes from. Now, in a love reading, this can also represent that your person believes that you are a gift to them from the universe. They believe that you are the one for them. They believe that you are their wish fulfillment. It's possible you guys had some sort of a fight here in the past. There was a walking away. There was something going on that probably shouldn't have. It caused a fight. There was a, a leaving, leaving this connection behind. But now your person is trying to look at things logically and be fair about this and communicate with you passionately or at least make forward progress toward you in some way. Look, we saw that Knight of Cups, the actions of love and emotions. They're just having fears and worries and they're stuck in their head about this opportunity with you to birth something new. Now also in their beliefs is the Knight of Pentacles. This is the slowest moving knight in the deck. It's a slow forward moving energy slow methodical one foot in front of the other not being in a big hurry we saw temperance a little bit ago patience not being in a big hurry the bad thing about the knight of pentacles is that he's so damn slow that oftentimes it seems like progress isn't happening even though it really is it's just happening so slow that sometimes you can't see the progress happening so this could be telling me that your person believes from their point of view that progress in this connection with you isn't happening as fast as they would like it to. Now that's the bad side of the Knight of Pentacles. The good side is he's slow. He doesn't mess things up because he's in a hurry, because he's rushing through it too quickly and making all kinds of mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes. He's like a perfectionist type of an energy. So when the Knight of Pentacles finally does show up, he's got the real deal. He's carrying this Ace of Pentacles, this opportunity that has the potential to grow into the Ten of Pentacles, that abundance and prosperity and that happy home life that we all want. So your person believes they can have this with you. They believe that you're the one for them. And it looks like what's happening slowly and the progress that's being made toward something slowly is toward this Ace of Cups. This represents a new beginning in love and emotions. Hmm. I'm, I'm still not fully understanding what this stuff in their feelings is. We've got the confusion about options and choices. We've got some painful situation, potentially an argument, some dispute, some fight. 
and either some sneaky behavior that was going on or not wanting to be hurt anymore. It's possible that your person got hurt in the past and they're not wanting to be hurt now, not wanting to be hurt again, which could be why they're having confusion about what to do in this connection. And it's almost like they're trying to push all of those emotions and the story about what happened with this painful situation, trying to push that out of their decision making here. But they're, they're having some fears and worries about doing that. It's possible that's what they can't see. They can't see how to detach from that pain from the past that they're trying to leave behind. Now that's their feelings, their thoughts, and their beliefs. Let's take a look at what their intentions are toward you here in May 2021. What does this person intend to do toward Sagittarius in May 2021, please? What are their intentions... For Sagittarius in May 2021. Let's get three cards. We're not taking the whole deck. Thank you. Let's just do one at a time, please. Okay. That one clearly wanted to come out. You too, huh? Okay. Let's get one more. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. That makes good sense. Bottom of the deck, wheel of fortune, divine timing, the wheel of fate, the wheel of destiny. So this can represent a fated event. This can represent a change in the luck and fortune of this connection. This can represent the universe turning that wheel in the background, trying to make sure things line up in a way that they're supposed to so that what's supposed to happen actually does happen. That's what this card usually represents for me, that what's supposed to happen is going to happen really ain't anything you can do about that there's nothing you can do to speed it up we see that in their beliefs this is happening slower than it than they would like it to but we're on divine timing here this is going to happen when it's supposed to there's nothing they can do to speed it up we have the sun right under that leo energy this is the happiest card in the tarot deck this is happiness joy abundance bliss harmony you can't get a better card than the sun. So this is telling me that your person views you as a source of happiness, views you as like the sunshine that lights up their life. You bring them a lot of happiness. Maybe they're intending to take their time here and be patient on this because there's so much happiness involved for them. Now, in their actual intentions for you, we have the Four of Swords, the Ten of Pentacles again, and we have the Two of Swords. Now, okay, let me go back here because right under this Wheel of Fortune in the Sun, we have the Two of Wands. Now, this is Aries energy. This is a fork in the road. It's a crossroads. It's a decision point. And it's a decision about which path leads them to the world that they really want and which path do they leave behind in order to get there. We see them at the beginning leaving something behind looks like what they're leaving behind is some painful situation that occurred to them and they're at this crossroads right now trying to decide which path leads me to the world that i want they have a lot of passion for you they're they believe that you could be the one for them and progress is happening slowly and surely toward this Ace of Cups, this new beginning in love and emotions with you. Again, we have the Six of Wands here, Leo energy, recognition. They're recognizing something, either about themselves or about whatever this painful situation was in the past, or about you or this connection. They're recognizing something that's allowing them to move forward in success and victory. Now, we did see the moon here, something being hidden in the dark. We've got the sun here right under the Wheel of Fortune. This can be illumination. Whatever it was hidden in the dark, the light's being shined on that, exposing it for what it is, which could be allowing them to come to some sort of a recognition about which path leads them to the world that they want. And right under that, we have this Knight of Cups again, actions toward love and emotions. I'm thinking that the painful situation that happened was this Five of Pentacles here. This is Taurus energy. This is a card of abandonment. This is about being cast aside. It's about being left out in the cold, feeling like they're not good enough. Again, fives represent conflict. We've got that five, that painful situation here in their feelings about you. 
I don't know if something happened in the past where you guys were together and broke up, or if this painful situation is referring to someone else from their past that's not you, that abandoned them, that caused them to have some abandonment issues. It's possible that it was you. We've got the Queen of Wands and Justice here. The Queen of Wands is a fire sign energy. This is someone who's bold, passionate, fiery, determined, who knows exactly what they want and goes after it. Someone who's very intuitive, very good looking, very fun to be around. And we've got Justice, Libra energy. This is a card of balance. It's about doing the right thing, the fair thing, the just thing. The sword in this card is used to sever things that aren't in balance, so balance can be restored and the right, fair, just thing can happen. It's possible that they were left out in the cold by an Aries or a Leo, or possibly by you. This could represent you in a general reading. This is usually Aries or Leo energy, though. And they're trying to balance this out. They're... Hmm... All I know for sure is you bring them a lot of happiness and they're getting some recognition about something in terms of choosing which path do they go down here. I feel like this has taken quite a long time for them to get clear on what to do here and make enough progress to actually get to where they believe they should offer this cup of love to you. But in their intentions, we have the Four of Swords, that Ten of Coins, Ten of Pentacles, and the Two of Swords. This Four of Swords is Libra Energy. We just saw the Justice card, which is Libra Energy. We have the Two of Swords out here. That's also Libra Energy. I got too many swords out here still, though. The only row that's missing swords is their beliefs. And in their beliefs, it's all good. Like, you're, you're the one for me, and I believe I should offer you this cup of love. This Four of Swords is taking a pause, taking a rest, taking a break. It's about choosing to go internal to do some thinking, to do some healing, and to do some thinking about something in terms of trying to figure out what to do moving forward here. Again, we've already seen this Ten of Pentacles. This is maximum stability, abundance, and prosperity. This can be the combining together of two people, two families, their assets, their resources, to build a legacy, to build something very stable, abundant, and prosperous. Again, this is most people's goal in the physical 3D reality. Then we're back to this Two of Swords energy here, this Libra energy. This represents, like all twos in tarot represent choices. The very first card in the reading is almost always the most important energy, and it's the Seven of Cups. Options and choices and confusion about what to do on those options and choices. We just saw the Two of Wands, a decision about which path leads me to the world I want. Now we've got a decision needing to be made only it's not being made, either because your person doesn't have enough information to make that decision, or there's something they can't see, hence that blindfold, hence this moon card. You can see how prevalent the moon is in the background. There's something that they can't see, and that's stopping them from making this decision. Hmm. Move this up a little bit, get some more room here. That's their intentions. Now, we all know how people are, what they intend to do, what they actually end up doing are oftentimes completely different things. So let's take a look at what this person's most likely actions are going to be toward you in May 2021. What is this person's most likely actions going to be towards Sagittarius in May 2021, please? What are their most likely actions going to be towards Sagittarius? In May 2021. Let's get one more, please. Thank you. Okay. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Nine of Cups. This is Pisces energy. This is sometimes a card of wish fulfillment. We've already seen the star out here. This can also be a card of wish fulfillment. Out of the two cards in the deck, we've got both of them that can mean wish fulfillment. A lot of times, this is an energy of being single, much like that Nine of Pentacles that we saw a little bit ago, which is actually out here again. 
in the nine of pentacles that's being okay in the physical 3d reality on their own not needing someone to physically take care of them in the nine of cups this is an energy of being okay emotionally like emotionally happy emotionally content full of their own self-love it's about not needing some external thing or person to get their happiness from because it's coming from inside themselves not needing some external person or thing to get their sense of love or being loved or being worthy of love because all that's coming from inside themselves it's being totally emotionally okay all on their own not needing someone else again doesn't mean that they don't want someone else it just means that when it comes right down to it all of that stuff that they actually need is coming from inside themselves now most people's goal in the physical 3d reality is this ten of pentacles most people's goal in terms of love and emotions and relationships is the ten of cups when in reality the nine of cups really should be the goal because until you're both in this nine of cups state you can't make it to the ten the only way to get to the ten is for two people in this nine of cups state to come together because their cups are totally full in and of themselves and if your cups aren't all the way full for example the only way for you to get to the nine would be to siphon some love and emotions off of them and fill your own cups up which yes gets you to the nine but it siphons some of their cups empty so now they're back down to the eight or the seven and that's how you get one of those up and down relationships that doesn't really pan out the way you want it to it's because you both need something from the other one and you keep sucking all the love and emotions out of the other person trying to fill yourself up when in reality if you both fill up your own cups and you don't need love and emotions from them to feel happy to feel worthy of love to feel your own sense of love and they don't need that from you to feel happy and loved and have their own sense of love what happens is you guys end up giving each other love anyway and because their cups are already full the love you give them overflows their cup and the love they give you overflows your cups and that's what fills up that 10th cup that's the only way to get to the 10th cup is for both of you to be in this state so this is a good energy for your person to be in in their most likely actions they're most likely to be totally emotionally okay with or without you We have the three of swords right underneath that this is heartbreak and sadness so this is telling me they're not emotionally okay they're not hmm after i just went on that long speech about all that and then very next card heartbreak and sadness usually from some third party energy now it doesn't necessarily mean that you or they are cheating it doesn't mean that in and of itself it can mean that especially when you have the seven of swords out here and the five of swords out here in their feelings that could definitely mean there's some third party love situation going on son of a biscuit i'm feeling like this means that they're going to put up this front and pretend like they're totally okay with or without you when in reality they're not there's some heartbreaking loss there's some heartbreaking situation going on here potentially a third party involved that could be what this two of swords is about a decision needing to be made and it's not being made there could be some secret being kept here there could be passionate messages passionate communications being transferred back and forth this could be your person intending to take a pause and try and figure this out like they're confused with the options that they have again general reading things could be flipped around this could be you that has options this could be you that has a decision to make right under this three of swords we have the high priestess again this three of swords is libra energy i've got three libra cards i have the two three and four of swords out here the whole sequence of the minor arcana libra cards is out here and we saw the justice card which is the libra major arcana 
I've got three Aquarius cards out here. I've got one Sagittarius card. A couple of Virgos. Capricorn. The High Priestess is next. This is she who knows. Now, she sits in front of the Veil of Consciousness. So she's got access to all the information that you and I as humans don't have access to. She knows everything. She can go back and forth behind that curtain of consciousness anytime she wants to. The problem with her is she doesn't always clue us in on everything. She doesn't always tell us everything that's going on. Sometimes there's stuff we're not meant to know. Sometimes there's stuff we don't really need to know until we need to know it. At which point she'll clue you in through your intuition, through gut feelings, through signs, synchronicities, dreams with messages in them, things like that. Subtle ways of cluing you in. When I've got her and the moon out here, this is telling me there's definitely something going on that someone doesn't know about. It looks like it's something going on that your person doesn't know about. But again, that can be totally flipped around here because this is a general reading. Something regarding the birth of something new. And see, we're going from the two of the major arcana who rules over all the other twos in the deck. We saw that two of wands, that fork in the road, the decision point about which path leads me to the world I want. We have the two of swords out here. A decision needing to be made, but it's not being made. She rules over those decisions. So there's some sort of intuitive process going on here. Gut feelings, intuitive hits, related to this decision, related to the birth of something new here. I'm still not 100% sure what this is about. I'm not sure how you could be in this Nine of Cups state and be totally emotionally happy and content in and of yourself and at the same time have heartbreak and sadness. Unless what this is telling me is they have moved past this heartbreak and sadness or they're most likely to move past the heartbreak and sadness from whatever this painful situation was in the past. Yeah, that's possible. And they're moving into this Nine of Cups energy where they are more happy and more fulfilled in and of themselves. They could be getting intuitive hits, divine guidance about birthing something new with you. We have the Ace of Pentacles again. That seed that has the potential to grow into this Ten of Pentacles that's in their intentions toward you. It's the seed being carried by this Knight of Pentacles in their beliefs about you. So this is telling me there is the potential here. It's going to take work, though. It's going to take time, effort, and energy being put into this in order to get it from this ace up to this ten. And it's looking positive on that end, though. We, we've got the Hierophant next, Taurus Energy. This is a card of commitment. This is about taking things to the next level. We've got the Queen of Cups next, Cancer Energy. This is... Someone who has a lot of love and emotions for you. Someone who wants to give their love and emotions to you. And now we're moving from that Two of Wands into the Three of Wands energy, which is more Aries energy. But this, in that Two of Wands, they're at that decision point about which path leads them to the world they want. In the Three of Wands, they've already made that decision. They've already chosen that path. And they've started actively taking steps down the path they've chosen. And they've got this positive expectancy that something good is going to come out of that. We've seen that it, what they're expecting is an opportunity for some level of commitment and love coming out of that. The birth of something new here. It just hasn't materialized yet. It hasn't shown up in the physical 3D reality yet. Again, we've seen the Empress a couple of times here. Card three of the Major Arcana. She's the gateway through which things get manifested into our reality. She rules over all the threes in the deck. This is the beginning stages of manifesting something. Where it hasn't actually manifested yet, they're still waiting on it to show up, but they have this positive expectancy that it's going to. And they're stuck in their head about it. Again, second time we've seen this, at least. Maybe third time we've seen this thinking about it over and over and over again on a repeating loop in their mind, feeling stuck and trapped and blocked. 
But in their most likely actions toward you for May 2021, we have the Three of Pentacles, we have the World, and we have the Nine of Pentacles. So this Three of Pentacles is teamwork, collaboration. It's working together as equals to build something of value, to build something great. What you'd be working together to build here is this Ten of Pentacles that's in their intentions toward you. They believe that there is the potential for this. It's just happening a little bit slow for their taste. It, there is progress being made, though, toward this new beginning in love and emotions here. And this is them wanting to work together, or most likely to start working together as equals with you. We have the world, which represents the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a beautiful new cycle. This is the final card in the Major Arcana. It starts with the Fool, and it ends with the world. So this is the ending and simultaneously the beginning where it starts back over at the full. So this is ending a cycle here, probably of this indecision, probably of this painful situation, leaving something behind. It looks like they're actually leaving it behind, putting that to an end and starting this new cycle with this nine of pentacles again, which this again is like being stable and abundant and prosperous in and of themselves, not needing someone else. I've got both of those cards out here. Not needing someone else in the physical 3D reality, like financially, to take care of them physically, and not needing someone else to take care of them emotionally. And it looks like that's coming off the back of getting out of this heartbreak and sadness that they were in. The person seems a little bit confusing just a little tiny bit there. So hopefully that made sense for you. That's your person though. Let's get you some advice on how to navigate this situation with them. So you know how to play this moving forward. What should you do? What should you not do? How should you kind of navigate this so it works out in a way that's best for you? What's the advice for Sagittarius in May 2021, please? Let's get one more. The advice for Sagittarius in May 2021 on how to navigate the situation with this person. Well, huh. Pretty intense mirroring here. I'll be danged. Bottom of the deck. Ten of coins. In this deck, they call the pentacles the coins. I've already seen this card in your person's intentions toward you. That maximum stability, maximum abundance, maximum prosperity. This can be the combining together of two people, two families, all their assets and resources to build something stable, abundant, and prosperous. The mirroring is intense. Two of swords. That's the... In their intentions, I got the ten of pentacles, and then the very next card is the two of swords. In the advice on the story on the bottom of the deck for you, the Ten of Pentacles and the Two of Swords in the exact same order. Some decision needing to be made about this Ten of Pentacles, only it's not being made. Either because you don't have enough information to make the decision, there's something you can't see, hence the blindfold, potentially something that you don't want to see, and that's preventing you from making a decision. But then we've got Judgment next. Judgment is the card of making a decision. It's about passing your own final verdict and judgment on a situation. Making a final decision. Now this can also be a card of second chances. As in resurrection. Bringing something back from the grave. Bringing it back to life. And transforming it in a way that it's never going to be the same again. Into an Ace of Wands. A new beginning in passion and desire. Now for your actual advice... Sagittarius, we got the nine of coin, the knight of coins, justice, the star, the six of wands, and the nine of coins. I have seen literally every single one of these cards in your person's energy. Every single one of them. The knight of coins is the same card as the knight of pentacles in their beliefs. Slowest moving knight in the deck. Slow, forward-moving energy, not being in a big hurry, not being in a big rush, taking it nice and slow. Bad thing is, this might be moving slower than you expected it to go, too. The good thing is, when it finally does show up, it's got the real deal. It's got the actual potential to be this Ten of Pentacles here. 
So that's good. Next we have Libra Energy with Justice. We've already seen the Justice card. This is the card of balance. It's about doing the right thing, the fair thing, the just thing. It's about severing things that aren't in balance so balance can be restored and the right, fair, just thing can happen. I think we're making slow, steady progress on balancing this out. It's possible that you guys had the dispute. It's possible that this was from your person's past. It's possible that this is a dispute with you. And there was some walking away, some leaving this connection behind at some point. And now it's like this is trying to be rebirthed again. Starting over from square one with this Ace of Cups. And it's like your person's trying to heal it. They have the hope that it can be healed. They believe you're the one for them. Very next card in your advice is the Star, which is the card I just picked up to tell you about from them. Aquarius Energy. Card of healing, a card of hope, a card of wish fulfillment. This can be that you're, you believe your person is the one for you. It's the very center card in your advice here. The very smack dab in the middle card. So This is telling me that there is the hope that this connection can be healed. Next card is the Six of Wands. We've already seen this in your person's energy on the story on the bottom of the deck at least twice. Leo energy. This is a card of recognition. As in you recognizing something, either about yourself, about your person, about this connection. Recognizing something that allows you to move forward in success and victory. This star card can also represent divine guidance. It's out here twice. We saw the high priestess and the story on the bottom of the deck for your person. There could be divine guidance happening. We saw the wheel of fortune, the divine turning the wheel in the background, making sure things line up so that what's supposed to happen actually happens. It looks like we're having some sort of a recognition here, potentially about being single. Again, the very last card in your person's energy is the Nine of Pentacles. The very last card in your advice is the Nine of Pentacles, or the Nine of Coins in this deck. With you, without you, in spite of you, I'm single, I'm stable, I'm abundant, I'm prosperous, all in my own right. I don't need you to take care of me. I don't need anyone in this physical 3D reality to take care of me or provide for me. I'm self-sufficient. I can do this on my own. Again, doesn't mean either one of you want to do this on your own. It just means that when it comes down to it, you totally could. Now, if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Sagittarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.